Hi, everybody. Welcome to module two for EDCX 323. Uh, I'm in the folder already, and I just want to show you a couple things to watch out for for this week. Um, this week, uh, towards the end of this week, happens to be the ISTE conference, which uh, you're going to learn a little bit more about ISTE this week. ISTE is the International Society for Technology in Education, uh, and it is our standards bearing organization. So if you are at all involved in technology in the classroom, um, if you are designing lessons that have technology in them, if you are working with your instructional coaches to add technology, um, if you aspire to become a technology or instructional coach yourself, um, then you will become more involved and understand the ISTE standards a lot more. So pretty much most teachers get introduced to the ISTE standards at some point early in their careers and some really spend a lot of time with them um, and so it's a really good thing to get to know what they are and so that's what we're going to explore this week we're also going to explore some resources that are available to you as a as a current student now and as a future teacher um, to help you stay connected with the education world because um, there is a whole world out there. There's a whole lot more that you can learn from the internet, from social media, from meeting other teachers and talking with them than you'll ever learn from a textbook. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have a textbook in this course is there's just too much out there that's changing so frequently that having a textbook is almost silly. So Flipgrid 2 is going to have us uh, learning about our um, professional learning network. In Indiana, the primary hashtag on Twitter, believe it or not, teachers use Twitter a lot, uh, if you didn't already know this, and uh, the hashtag that most teachers in Indiana use to keep each other uh, connected and uh, stay in the conversation is INELEARN. Indiana Department of Education sponsors this through their Office of eLearning, so INELEARN. Um, so, and we're actually going to explore the INE Learn hashtag, which means that you do not have to sign up for Twitter. That's one of the nice things about Twitter is that as a if you're not a member and not signed up um, or not signed in even and don't want to sign in with a personal account, um, you can still access the things that are out there. You can't reply, but if that's not your style and you just want to see what's out there without um, participating, you can do that too. So. Um, we're going to explore the INE Learn hashtag and what's going on. And what's kind of exciting is that because it's the summer semester and this is happening right during ISTE, um, there's going to be a lot of folks out there also talking about ISTE. So they're going to use the hashtag ISTE19. Um, that is pretty cool because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out there. ISTE usually takes over Twitter and becomes one of the top five trending hashtags during the week of the conference. Um, it's a huge conference. Over 25,000 people go to this thing. Uh, I'll be there in Philadelphia. You'll probably see some flip grids of me uh, talking to you from my hotel room or some other part of ISTE um, <laughs> because it's, it's where it's at and that's where um, I go because I am a uh, board member for the Indiana Connected Educators, which is our um, Indiana affiliate of ISTE. So in Indiana, every October, we have a conference. It's called the ICE Conference, Indiana Connected Educators. Uh, and the ICE Conference happens in uh, Noblesville, which is near Indianapolis. Every October this year, it's going to be the 17th and 18th. So it's really a great conference. Um, it's kind of a mini ISTE, not nearly as big. There's probably about 700 teachers and educators from across the state who go. Um, it's a really great time. So if you can come, it's only like $45 for a student. Highly recommended. Um, if you can ever get to ISTE someday, I highly recommend that. It's a little more expensive and you usually have to travel, but um, it's a great time. But you can kind of live vicariously through everybody that's on Twitter talking about it. Uh, so if nothing else, you'll be able to experience part of ISTE just from doing this discussion. So we're going to go on the INE Learn hashtag, which I have a link that'll take you straight to it. If you're not a Twitter user, don't worry. It's not a problem. You will learn quickly. This is what it looks like. Um, best thing I can, I can tell you to do is when it takes you to top, which is usually the first thing it takes you to, go to latest instead. Um, 
because that way you'll see the top the the most recent things that are coming up instead of just whatever the most popular things are which may or may not be as uh, as useful so um, following the kind of the moment to moment from the latest tab sometimes gives you a better look at what's actually happening so you can see here's Nathan guy I know uh, a lot of teachers are that are posting on here are people that I've met through ICE and other uh, aff affiliations. So um, it's really kind of neat to be able to talk to these people and connect with them anytime you want through this venue. Um, so they're sharing things about upcoming conferences, things that they're reading, some reading plans, lesson plans they're working on. Summer is an awesome time to be looking at uh, the in, the education hashtags. So. They're all talking about the conferences that are coming up. There's a bunch of statewide conferences happening too. There's all these little things happening. So uh, you will learn a few things about what's going on. And so our job is to find at least one thing that you can kind of share with the rest of us and, uh, you know, find out what's cool, what's happening, what's exciting, and tell us what you found. Um, so, for example, uh, South Shore eLearning is our Hammond, our local Hammond um conference and they will have ended by the time you do this discussion but you can still kind of see some of the things they're doing so if i want to talk about the south shore e-learning uh conference coming up then that might be my flipgrid and so you just talk about what you found in um in i and e-learn whatever jumped out to you and uh you know talk about what you thought about this whole experience in general especially if you're not a twitter user did this help you kind of see some value in twitter uh, are you still not convinced um just what do you think about this whole professional learning network business in the first place and post it up on our flipgrid so you'll even see that on flipgrid um there's also another video there uh, it's a longer video uh, but it might be useful to actually watch it watch through it that would be Flipgrid 2 that we're on. And no, I don't know why they're not in order, so <laughs> I apologize for that. But um, we'll work on that. Uh, but there's that video. And so that's actually from the Department of Ed. Uh, and they're talking about the value of your professional learning networks. It's a really good video to try and watch at least most of. So you get an idea of what this whole thing is all about and why we do it. Um, if what you've heard already isn't convincing enough for you. So that's the discussion um, to, to dig into I and E learn a little bit uh, and get, get familiar with what's out there. And like I said, this is a fun, explosive time to be on Twitter. It truly is. So the other thing that we're going to do is our ISTE standards project. So we're going to sh write a short paper um, about the ISTE standards. So the ISTE standards, they actually have standards for students. They have standards for educators. They also have standards for principals and other people like that. Well, we're just going to focus on the two, the students and the educators, and um, kind of analyze what these standards are all about. You know, when you look at them, um, there's going to be a lot going on there. Each one is going to have kind of a main overall uh, and then a set of standards or indicators, 1A, 1B. So those are the ones that really are important, are the Bs and the Cs and so forth. But each one of these, digital citizen, global, uh, you know, global innovator or knowledge constructor, innovative designer, computational thinker, global collaborator, etc. So all of these ideas are similar across the teacher and the students. Um, standards. And so when you read through these, you know, kind of what are the similarities that you see? Where are the connections that are made between the educators and the student standards? And then what differences do you see? Are there places do you think that there might be some um, missing pieces between the standards uh, for students and teachers? And, you know, where, where might they need to um, line up better? There, you might be, see those places. Uh, so basically read those two websites talk about them. What do you see that's similar and different? Do you disagree with anything that's there? Um, do you find anything kind of weird or not necessary, inappropriate even? Um, what other resources does ISTE have for you to help you? Uh, and then come up with some short lesson ideas and any grade you want to. So that's going to be our uh, project for this. Come up with some lesson ideas, talk about it, write up something you can add as an attachment or you can do a google uh, google doc and send that to me in blackboard so have some fun think about it let me know what questions you have